we see the rise of violent extremism striking societies across the world. We see citizens turning weapons against their own, but why do people engage in such actions? No one is born a violent extremist. Violent extremists are made, they're fueled. We were just brought up to say that the Protestants were different from us and they were constantly putting Catholics down and we were carrying that sort of stories from your parents and your uncles to say that uh, as Catholics we weren't getting treated well and that's why we were always hungry and cold. And by the time you're 16 you've just grown into never getting to know who you were beating up. We had the army there as well and the police so we had like three groups that we didn't like. They were all fighting for Queen and Country and we were there fighting just for to get our rights, whatever it was. He was always kind of different and when he was in school he would wear a bandana on his head and he had a long tail that came down his back. One day he got attacked in the playground and they cut off his tail. And that was the first and only time he was ever bullied. I was just traumatized beyond traumatized. And I'm sure some seeds were planted by that incident. A reinforcement of the idea that, that violence is uh, kind of just a fact of life and a way of life. You either run with it or you get run over by it. I, I don't want to be in that position again. If I look at the reasons behind me joining this particular radical group, I was unable to think for myself because of the, the way I was controlled as a child. This is probably my way of wanting to be controlled again, right? I couldn't think for myself. I had to be the follower. I needed a leader. I needed someone to be in control. There is no single pathway for radicalization or speed at which it happens. It is a combination of socioeconomic, psychological, and institutional factors that lead to violent extremism. Push factors drive individuals to violent extremism, such as marginalization, inequality, discrimination, the feeling of being persecuted, poor education, denial of rights, and other grievances. Pull factors attract individuals to violent extremism, such as well-organized violent extremist groups that provide services, revenue, and employment. They also claim to offer a place to belong and a supportive environment. Contextual factors provide a breeding ground for violent extremist groups, such as fragile states, the lack of rule of law, corruption, and criminality. Security is often the first step to curbing violent extremism, but it is not a long-term solution. We need prevention to tackle the roots of violent extremism, and education is key to prevention. It can redress inequalities that fuel violent extremism, and it helps learners to make informed decisions and engage responsibly. Action is needed at all levels of education to develop an effective prevention strategy. We need inclusion for students to develop a sense of belonging and respect for diversity. Resilience to build students' capacities to overcome hardships and challenges. We need safety and well-being in schools so all learners feel safe and supported. Procedures to appropriately respond to the needs of persons at risk. And finally, partnerships are needed between education institutions and the community at large for effective and comprehensive interventions. As educators, we have a key role to play to prevent violent extremism. Let us not miss this opportunity to make a difference.